Welcome back to Families in Action on your local hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Kerry Quashen along with my co-host, Jerry Bruce. And we're wishing Michael Doherty a, a speedy recovery. And we got Dan Broyle and Carol McCabe from the Grace Baptist Church here with us today. And, um, wow, we were just talking about the... Uh, the heroin um, explosion, if you want to talk about, and epidemic, as everybody would call it, and the lives that are lost. But let's let's change gears. How's that? Great. Let's change gears to what you what, what you're seeing, and, and talk about the church and great. some of the asking for help kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, great. Well, one of the the trends we see still is how people really struggle to ask for help when they're going through a tough time. They uh, really want to do it themselves or handle it on their own, when really they really need support and they almost have a sense of shame of asking for help with whatever the topic is going on and so one of the the thing things we've been talking about is it's actually good and normal to ask for help sometimes mm -hmm. when you're going through whatever it is you're going through whether it's a divorce or grief or feeling depressed or whatever it is you're going through to ask for help because all of us need help at different parts at different times mm -hmm. in our lives and but there's a lot of fears or even shame of asking for help especially for guys especially like right. we, we should be able to handle it all on our own no matter what mm. and so we were people are feared of people being judged to embarrassment to this won't work to all sorts of reasons which then further helps them even get further stuck right. in their growth or in their their family life or whatever it is and so I was talking to a gentleman recently who was asking for help in his new business and he goes yeah that's normal just ask for help I hired a consultant who helped me out with this one aspect of my business and with his family life he was really embarrassed to ask for marriage counseling right there was shame attached versus his business you can ask for help in his personal life you're not supposed to and so we here at yeah, at Grace, really want to help people t uh, to support people when they're going through tough times and care for people when they're going through hard times, whether f they're from a church community or not, or whether whatever their background is, to really support people and not go through things alone and have hope and faith in the midst of whatever they're facing. One of the, the, the groups that uh, helps a lot with people is, our, for instance, our grief group. When you face a, a group with a loved one who passes away, that is hard on anybody, no matter where you're coming from. The, the amount of emotion you feel, sometimes the regrets people have. And so we really want to encourage people in general, no matter where you're coming from, to ask for help, join a group like that or other types of uh, right. support to really be cared for, uh, have greater greater hope. And so uh, I've just seen that as so needed for all of us, just as people, is to ask for help when needed. Why is it so hard for people to ask for help, Carol? What is it? I think a lot of it is judgment, especially if um, they're not used to having healthy relationships. They don't understand that, you know, having even just the concept of having somebody want the best for them is something new. Um, yeah. They they haven't had you know that modeled in their life. They've never had somebody that you know is there because they're a human being and that they have value and um, that they're you know worth investing in um so i think that that is huge and then when they make that when they make that um jump to actually come in that's like the biggest step is you know that hurdle of you know approaching the unknown and mm -hmm. actually you know well, it's, defi help. it's definitely frightening mm -hmm. oh, I, I, is high. i've been sober for 35 years mm. on christmas eve right mm. and i remember walking into a treatment center 35 years ago saying okay this place is going to save me it took me about three minutes to figure out they weren't going to do nothing mm. they were just there as a tool mm -hmm. and then all that insecurity is coming what if i can't do it Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Or it's going to be too hard. It's going to be too hard. Or facing their pain is really hard. Oh, oh, yeah. Some of it is like, systemic from the family system that they are in yeah. and raised where we don't seek help outside our family. You know, or just you know, male codes like you're talking mm -hmm. about. You know, they've been passed down generational to generational. Mm -hmm. you know, we're supposed to be stoic and strong and not feel and do all these things. You know, this 21st mm -hmm. century, you know, we, we are human. We have these feelings. And to reach out is you know, it needs to happen more and more. And people still have that ideation that this is not what we have, are, you, are to do. But you know what? It's even harder now than before. I mean, be, I'll tell you why. Because par families aren't connected anymore. That's really what's scary. That's, to me, what's one of the most scariest things. Families are disconnected. Social media has taken over. I know p kids, parents and kids that text each other from the house. They're in different rooms. They don't even get up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we're losing that lack of contact. 
Right. So I've even seen sometimes I'll meet with a family or an individual and I'll say, so how is your kid really doing? Or how is, let's say, your wife or husband, whoever, mm -hmm. in your family really doing? And they go, I don't know. And they don't even know. And so there's just even a greater sense of, of isolation right. uh, in their life, which just makes things so much harder to cope with, especially when things are stressful. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Jerry? I try and work with the families on uh, transparency with the kids. Mm -hmm. you know, and I try and get the kids to tell them what's going on in your life. So they don't ask you all these questions. They don't want to be interrogated. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have, you know, what, as soon as they come home, did this happen, did this happen? What just come home and tell them, and you don't have to worry about them interrogating you. Tell them what's going on. They just want to be active. In your, they don't want to control your life. They just want to be active in your life. You know, and it's still very hard for them to do it. And I use that word, transparency. If everyone knows what's happening inside the family system, then we know when there's we're, a problem. We're as sick as our secrets yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah we're as sick as our secrets when we start hiding stuff things go bad yeah, even in a church context i'll actually say you're as mature as your secrets mm -hmm. because people uh, we can hide in different ways and, and even in a faith system think i want god to affect even those most private parts of my life right those delicate parts of my life whether it's i feel resentful towards somebody or whatever is going on inside me that i need to face to look at that, that in a in a healthy way and it's a amazing though when people do finally ask for help and it feels safe the relief they have right that they are not alone and how much that can help just this past weekend we actually started a, a premarital class for people getting married who want to start out on the right uh, right. foot and you can see something I think everybody should join that <laughs> <laughs> and I really do <laughs> some of the, the, the young men in there were very nervous it seemed like yeah, I'm sure the, the unknown but the research even shows that people that do some premarital classes or even premarital counseling actually have a a divorce rate of 30% less Wow! of just doing some of that prevention of getting some extra tools, some sense of community or whatever that is for the uh, support. Mm. You could talk to anyone that's been married for a while. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do the pre-child ones too. So <laughs> yeah, really make sure they're ready to have a child. No, that, I, that's important. Yeah. I don't, Absolutely. Yeah, that's, Absolutely. Why, that's why our support groups are so important yeah. because people don't know. I mean, we have babies. We say we'll never, we'll never act like our parents. Well, guess what? We find, yourself doing the same thing that's what yeah, you learn yeah absolutely and so i i always like to say to parents sometimes i say your your kids will pick on all the areas of your life whether good or bad right and they notice those nuances of details whether it's with emotions whether it's how you face stress um, where do you turn to for help when life's really difficult? Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we currently have, what, 20, 25 groups, anywhere from past sexual oh. abuse to anger. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm reading this. I mean, 60 lay counselors in right. 20 groups such as grief, divorce, anger, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you've got lots going right. on up there. Even a group for people who've had bad church experiences in the past. Do you really? And how do you have a sense of healing when there's been hurt? And so we want the church to be a safe place of, of healing. And... Unfortunately, sometimes they find it safer there than within their own families. Mm -hmm. and, but they want a place they can trust, right. which trust does take a long time. I'm curious even what you guys see. What are some of the patterns you guys see of why people won't even check into rehab or get help through you guys? What? I think you said it all. I think it's one, the, big, the largest one is fear of the unknown. Or preconceived notions about what it's really going to be. I'm crazy if I go mm -hmm. see one of these people. Right. I don't want to be labeled that. You know, if I have to go on medication for this disorder, you know, I'm going to be a crazy person and people are going to judge me. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. you know, or just you know, stuff passed down from their parents. You know, that they had bad experience and you know, or they went to a family therapy and it was just explosive before they came to us. So they don't want to do that again. You know. Yeah, I think I've seen that quite a bit. Is where they try to get help once, All right, and it doesn't go well or is hoped and was, then they think all helps that way or. I was actually speaking to a mom I ran into um, this weekend at a, at, at a market and she was telling me her kid's a mess mm -hmm. and I said come back come to action she said I tried that I said did you I remember you were there a couple of times she said yeah I was there twice I said, did you really try? <laughs> I said, and there's other places but a lot of times people try and, and, and what does really try and mean? Yeah. You know? Well, one of the word pictures I use with people sometimes, especially when their life is really overwhelming or their, their family is really stressed out, is to me it's, it's like getting in a serious car accident. Mm -hmm. And when you get in a serious car accident and you have broken bones, you don't just go to the ER room right. and get some Vicodin and go home. Right. Oh, well, some people do. Well, they try. <laughs> That's, and then they end up in yeah, rehab. Yeah, then you're at your place. <laughs> but for, for some healing from those physical injuries, 
there needs to be some long term, whether it's you need surgery right. to you need physical rehab, in the same way as with even spiritual and emotional and family hurts. Sometimes that can go on or challenges. There needs to be some long term healing. But that well, Dan, versus just two times. Isn't spiritual and emotional pain even worse than physical? At times, it's harder to put a, a label or a finger on that yeah. uh, when there's been those emotional wounds. I've heard so many people say, I can still remember the words of like one of my parents when I was 10. Right. When my mom or dad says, you'll never make it or never be worth it or whatever those wounds right. can uh, last for a long time. You were talking on our break about suicide. People, and well, I was going to say people don't kill themselves, take their lives because of physical pain. That's not true. But more people take their lives over emotional pain mm -hmm. than physical pain. Yeah, w one of the phrases I will say to people who, who are suicidal, I'll say, it's not that you want to die, you want the pain to end. Right. Absolutely. And they'll say, yes, that's it. That That's how it feels. And they've tried other options in their opinion. They, they, they're like in a black tunnel yeah. and they can't see the pain yeah. ending in, in any way. And I run, I run the behavioral health unit at Henry Mayo and, and there's only three ways to get in there. You got to want to kill yourself, somebody else, or you got to be really disabled, gravely disabled. And I'll tell you, I don't think anyone really wants to die. I think they just don't want to feel the pain anymore and they just can't see a way out. But it's like like Carol was saying a little bit ago, a bit ago, is if you ask for help, you might be shocked. Mm -hmm. There are people that can help you, and, and I believe emotional pain, as people say, well, you know, time heals all. I don't believe that. I don't know that time heals all, but it makes it easier to deal with everything. And there are people in, the light, in, your, in, in this world that can help walk you through some of these terrible times. You so we work with clients on relapse prevention, and part of it is when they get through one of those stressors without picking up, without using again, that should reinforce that they can do this. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to do that with the trauma as well and the coping skills where you know, you've made it through a blow up with your family and you didn't go use. You know, you may have to, and you didn't resort to harming yourself. You didn't resort to you know, these old behaviors that are damaging to you. And that's, that's the positives and that's what we're trying to work with them on. And you know, some get it, some don't. But yeah. what scares me is, and we, let's talk a minute about it, is, is the suicide rate right now. Mm -hmm. I know we have more suicides even here last year than we've had ever. Right. In Santa Clarita and nationally, it's way up. Right. And Santa Clarita is higher than the national average. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think part of it is uh, people not knowing how to face their stress or mm -hmm. we can hide behind different things, even behind uh, successes, whether it's in their career or family. And it appears like everything's great. Yeah. But emotionally beneath the surface, they're, they're dying inside of loneliness mm -hmm. and really wondering, do people really care about me? Right. Do, do I matter? Do I have purpose? And do people care? And and people are just longing to know, does someone genuinely care about me? And so, But then when we're in that funk mm -hmm. and we don't really care about ourself, mm -hmm. it's hard to believe that anybody else really cares. Right. Some might care, but you're in such a stuck place you can't even absorb it. Everybody loves you. No, they don't. Nobody wants me around. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah, so it's it's you're up against a lot of stuff, huh? That right. purpose, you know. That's instead of we ask the kids, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up, or who do you want to be, you know, what do you think your purpose is, you know, and they don't know what to answer. Right, they really don't. Right, so to think I'm isolated, no one cares about me, and I don't have purpose, right. and my family's not there for me. I mean, that's a, that's a despairing place mm. where people need a lot of help, and they're suspicious. Then, if you convey help, you're just doing this because of money or all sorts of ulterior motives right. versus you really care about me. I'm actually curious, Carol, what you've seen when people finally learn that they're cared for, what that does for them in a genuine way over time, not just a one-time conversation. What have you seen with people, whether it's at church or just interactions with people? What have you seen? You know, um, I'd say in the last nine years, as, at Grace Baptist especially, um, when I've met with individuals in one-on-one -on -one situations or groups, um, almost always their first comment is, you know, I know I'm the only one. Right. This, you They're know, all alone. Right, yes. yeah. And, and then they, you know, go into their problem, but, and then here it is. And then towards the end then of our sessions, um, whether it's group or individual, they get a glimpse of reality and knowing that, you know what, 
there's a lot of people that struggle with um, my issue, and um, that's that's something that you know is healing for them because they realize that they're not alone, that they're um, that they have a sense of community, that there's other people that you know can come alongside of them, but also that there's people that'll join them in their journey, that they're not unique, you know, that there are um, other people that struggle and that they can join together and um, and journey through, you know, their experience together. I don't think I've, I've been working with people for a lot, a lot of years, and I don't think I've ever heard a secret that I haven't heard many, many, mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've heard mm -hmm. many, many, many people think they were the only ones with that secret. Right. right. So, yeah, and when they finally believe that they're not the only one or you're willing to join me in this journey it's amazing how their hope changes right mm -hmm. when they they truly believe that it's not just them but other people have gone through this or um, you're going to walk this through with me or god's with me when they believe they're not alone it changes their outlook right. and they almost have more courage to get help mm -hmm. when that's going on I, and i also believe I, I i really don't believe there's anything worth dying for Maybe, maybe my kids. I mean, that's what I would say yes for that. But really, in life, what's really worth dying for? And we can make it through anything with a little help sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just having the courage to say, hey, I need some help. Right. But nothing's worth dying. I'm going to say it again. Nothing's worth dying for. Yeah, it'll pass. You know, that's why you can't get in through. You know, tomorrow's a new day. This is going to be different, you know, and... They just got to hold on through today, you know, because everything kind of changes as we go through life. And you know, to try and convince them of that is very difficult. You know, that it's just always going to be this way. I'm stuck. And that hopelessness that follows that. But when we're in the midst of that depression, it really feels like we can't get out of it. We're really stuck. Yeah, one of the, sometimes I'll say to people, I say, can I be your eyes outside the black tunnel? <laughs> Good saying. I'm going to have when, to use that. <laughs> when they are really stuck and they really cannot see a glimmer of light at times. It they looks really like can't. the train coming, huh? And I'll say there's actually, you know, there's actually uh, a beach or whatever word picture I use outside this black tunnel. You just can't hear it and you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and it's amazing to see when people learn that actually they can use their story to help someone else through that story. Mm-hmm how much healing they can happen in their life is, is huge. Whether it's right. someone who went through an addiction now is helping someone else or had abuse and now they're helping someone else. We have uh, one of our groups with, uh, it's for people with past sexual abuse and this was someone's story and now they use their story for good to help others go, how do I connect with others and have hope and healing? How do I receive God's love in the midst of everything I've gone through? Right. What's tell us? You got how many different groups over at, the, at Grace Baptist right now? Well, we call them our care groups. We have 25, 20 to twenty five of these groups. Name some of them. Uh, so we have men's anger, grief. We have divorce care for kids, uh, which is a significant one. Uh, we have one called Frazzled Families, in which you have a family member in which there's a mental health problem. Mm -hmm. We have. Uh, different layers of a grief support. We have our one-on-one -on -one, uh, lay counseling. Right. It's really And grief support is super important, especially oh. right now. I, it seems like everywhere I go, I'm running into people that really need that. So talk a little about that. I think... Yeah, we, the research shows actually that, it, especially if you lose a close family member, it takes years. Right. Especially if you lose that spouse or that best friend, that your kid, years and years. And so what happens is about two to three months after the death of a, of a loved one, all the support stops. Right. However, in many situations, the shock of the death actually wears off and they actually feel worse. Right. They actually have greater depression that three to 12 months after the death, even more sometimes in the initial death, because the shocks wear it off and they actually can feel the, the permanency of the death and there's no more emails coming in or cards coming in. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're thinking of you, praying for you. They're not bringing food over anymore. Right, all that right. support stuff. It feels like everybody else has moved on. Right. And now they even feel more alone and everybody's mm -hmm. forgotten about that person they really love. 
And I, I see that. That's why I'm saying that. I, when, it, when it first happens, everybody's on top of mm -hmm. it, and everybody's crying, and everybody's hugging, and then about three or four months, like you said later, it, it falls apart. And then throughout the year, often there's triggers that, the, that surprise them a lot. Right. So like Mother's Day, Father's Day, mm -hmm. that first Christmas, oh. the birthday of that individual who's died. The, em the empty chair. Uh, all that stuff is so significant. So we have a group that literally meets year-round on, uh, on Wednesday nights. And it's for anybody who's had a death in their family. And people go through it even a couple times because just getting through that first year of triggers mm -hmm. is, is huge. And the other thing that's really tragic sometimes is... And what does it cost people? There's nothing. Oh, okay. There's no cost to it. And you don't have to attend our church. There's no strings attached. We just want to support people going through tough times. And... But, but again, that's scary, and there's stuff in their tears, and all those things that are really hard to do. But we found there's such healing when you face your grief. Yeah. The, the people who face the grief the most have the best healing. Right. The ones that avoid it, it feels like the grief drags actually years and years and years, even decades I've seen when people's really avoided the, their grief in their lives. And, and I highly suggest it. I mean, hey, if you're dealing with any kind of grief or loss, Grace Baptist Church every Wednesday at what time? Right, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. It, it's a mandatory. You need to be there. You really do. And one of the things I would recommend, too, is especially if anybody has kids, when you go to a group like that, you get support to be better better engaged with your kids when you get home. Right. Because there's so much emotions tied into grief that you can deal with your own stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're better able to care for your family who's also grieving right. and really be a support for them. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not strong enough to be there for anyone else. So right. Take care of yourself and you could surely be there. In, in a in a way different way for your children. Hey, it's time for a break, Jerry. That sounds good. This Families in Action on your hometown station AM twelve twenty KHDS. Welcome back to Families in Action on your hometown station AM twelve twenty KHDS. I'm Kerry Question. I'm your host. My co-host Michael Doherty is um, under the weather. We were, we're saying prayers for him. I hope he gets a speedy recovery. Um, Jerry Bruce is filling in. Yep. And we got Dan Broyles and Carol McCabe from Grace Baptist. And what a great show. I think we're really, we're giving some, a really good experience, strength, and hope out there. And what I want to do is, you do so much stuff. In fact, I don't know why we don't have flyers for all your groups at my office. Because we need to have them. Right. So please tell us what you guys are doing and how people can get involved and who should come. Yeah, we, we really want to be there to support individuals and families in the in the Santa Cruz area. We're actually having people coming from outside the area, even just for help, just people long for help. And one of the misconceptions that people have sometimes is they even have to be like a member of the church or those type of things to even get support. Right. And that's just simply not uh, true. We really want to care for our community because there's hurts everywhere in our community. And so there's not like a string attached that you have to like join the church before you come to uh, you can, group group. but you don't have to. Right. I mean, if people have the freedom to do so, and they want, they have spiritual thoughts or questions, and they want to look into it. Great, and we're always open to talk about spiritual things. We're a church, right? But there's no pressure that they have to uh, join or give money to the church or any of those kind of misconceptions people have before they can get uh, support. Because some people, it's so hard just to join one group, <laughs> let alone everything else. I've had people literally drive onto our, our campus and they'll tell me later after they're doing better, they'll sit in the car for half an hour, literally sitting in their car wondering, do I walk into that group or not? Because I'm so scared. I've had people come to my action parent group mm -hmm. and said, you're new tonight. They said, well, yes and no. I tried to come three weeks in a row and didn't mm -hmm. have the courage to come in. It's yeah. a scary deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had people come up, sit there and drive back and we think they just miss an appointment and they right. eventually make it there. But they're so scared and it goes, you know, against what they've done their whole life, which is try to contain it all of themselves or be too independent. So we have a list of groups even on our, our website, gracebaptist.org backslash care or backslash marriage, either one of those things. People can go and look up different groups. People can sign up online for uh, groups. Uh, one of our, our groups we actually have three of now is called Boundaries Group. Mm -hmm. And a Boundaries Group is pretty much a group for people in which you allow other people to dictate your mood more than you should. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, hey Jerry, should we go? <laughs> we can invite you. Yeah, we'll, we'll sign you up later. We might have to go to that one. <laughs> so we have 
three of those groups going right now and uh, for women we're starting to guys one up here coming up soon and so part of it is how do we uh, especially from a faith perspective how to let even God influence uh, our mood more than just other people because you can't make everybody happy right that's just impossible to make everybody happy and, and so and if you try you'll go crazy yourself oh yeah talk about anxiety <laughs> yeah if uh, you're trying to make everybody happy it just won't work and so so we encourage people actually to come and even uh, try out uh, a group. And so one of the things that people do is when they call our, our care office is, is, is they'll actually come and meet with myself or somebody else just to assess where we can help them or where else they can get help in the community. There's other uh, churches and nonprofits doing other good things out there. And so a lot of times they'll meet with myself or one of our staff to assess uh, where else can you get help? Because sometimes people's um, problems or family problems are pretty complicated right and it's not just a, a quick fix yeah. uh, to solve whatever's going on in that person's in his life so we really want to encourage people to you can go online at gracebaptist.org slash uh, care and just email us check us out and we really want to be there to care for people when life really is is difficult how long have you been doing this dan so i've been uh, on staff since 2002 Wow. At, at the, the church. And part of that, I was actually a social worker mm -hmm. investigating child abuse cases. That's right. And so I know there's a ton of pain in our in our valley here that is, is beyond what a lot of people are talking about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to go beneath the surface a little bit. But there is just a lot of pain within families, even though it might seem fine on the outside. Gotcha. Are a lot of them gender specific? Well, some of the groups are. So like a grief group is both men and women, but some of our boundaries groups, uh, we have some for men and some for women. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, coming up in May, for instance, we have a women's forgiveness group. If you ever struggle with bitterness or resentment towards anybody in your life. And I know some people that. would need to go to that group too. <laughs> and so these are just really practical groups. And where can you uh, seek hope in this and a spiritual sense and a personal sense, relational basis. And we usually want to come alongside people. Grace Baptist Church, Dan and Carol, thank you so much for being here today. You're, you're a couple of our, our local heroes. We appreciate everything that you and the church does. And hey, if you want to download this, you can always go to um, AM 1220 and, and Families in Action. You can find this show. And we're on, I know for sure, Time Warner at 4 p.m. every Monday. This show will be on next week, 4 p.m., Channel 20. Um, hey, thanks for being here. Jerry, thanks for your help. This thanks, Jerry. Families in Action. Thank you so local, much. You, thank you. Local uh, AM 1220, KHTS. Bye.